to see i mean i do understand that uh people have different problems but it's sad to see that because of and in every culture in everywhere in every country you do have criminals but you don't because of that just generalize and tell everyone that these people are criminals that's not how things are meant to work just because a select bad few do some things doesn't mean you blow, blame a whole nation of 200 million people for what is happening in your country you can't say people should leave you alone there are south africans everywhere papa, in the world papa just, i'm not yes, i'm not stopping you from your your this i'm just trying to assess okay. something before you continue you see yeah. and this is what i've been saying look if they say nigeria is the giant of africa this is one thing i see it i'm a Ghanaian, right i say giant of africa you pick all, all the african countries nigeria's population of number every country in in africa they've got they've exactly. got a very large population they yeah, even get ahead into even 300 million. And look, yes. despite the problem yeah. in Nigeria, um, they are creating more millionaires and billionaires on the, on, on the continent. But look at it in this way. Look, because of your, your population, do you get it? And because yeah. of the political yeah. incorrect, incorrectness in Nigeria, mm -hmm. Ghana, Ghana is not an exception. Do you understand? These are yeah. West African um, um, leaders who have been bought by the West. These guys cannot be controlled. They don't exactly. care about us. They don't care about the exactly. people. So look at it in this way. You have mass Nigerians who are traveling over, over the globe. And look, yes. this is where the problem yes. started. Remember when these Europeans first came to Nigeria, you get it, to invest in the oil and stuff like that. They have been, mm -hmm. you know, where I've got details of that. But even Benna Boy even tried to even um, outline um, um, how Unilever came to um, um, Nigeria, you understand? And then some of the forefathers, I think there was a deal where did not go, go well for the whites to be okay. And that was when, that was when Nigeria problem started. Do you understand? That is how the West started um, trying to blacklist Nigerians. That is why the Naira was attacked. Do you get it? Because exactly. they wanted to make the country very poor, the way they did to uh, uh, Mugabe in, in, in Zimbabwe. Do you get it? So this thing went on over a while. And when these things happen, it's not just an international warfare. It affects the livelihood of the citizens, which is the Nigerians. And because of that, there is mass uh, um, immigration, and then they still want to control the money. They're the ones making money from diesel and stuff like that. And this thing is affecting the livelihood of the people. And this is what is giving them the mass what um, 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 immigration. Some are going to London, US, everywhere of the world. Do you understand? So your team, look at it in this way. If I Sorry say, I'm coming. Let me finish. I just, I just, I just have a question Roger, for you okay. when you analyze your remember. statement. Can you also elaborate on the drug thing since you've been staying in South Africa? I'm coming. Don't worry, my brother. Look. So this is what I'm saying. So that. The, the, the mass, you see, the problem starts from home. This is what the whole thing is. My two lectures, one well, of my two best lectures in, in, in African University College, they were Nigerians. And I remember those times when we want to do any demonstration. Um, uh, Okochuku Inweke, he was the man, he was the dean of, of communication, one of the uh, yeah, visual communication. He, he was the one who can stand in front of us and stop us from what? From demonstrating. He's a very gentleman. Do you get it? But this is the point. Because of that sidelining from the West, look, there's no way a Nigerian will travel to South Africa and then seek for work somewhere that they get to know that, oh, this person has a Nigerian passport and then you find the person being employed there. Do you understand? So this is how the whole thing is. So that struggle, I'm not saying selling drugs is good. It's not a good thing. Do you get it? It's never a good thing for Nigerians to sell drugs. But the question I want to ask is, how many times have you. Nigerians... You know what I'm yeah, trying to say? Yeah, that's like how many you, times have Nigerians... You know what I'm trying to say is... Can I continue? Can you hear me? Can I continue? No, let, let me just, let me just conclude on something. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is... You can't... Because it's, it's, I, I understand it's a problem. And it's, it's, it happens in Nigeria itself. Within tribes. You know this whole generalization that this tribe is this, that one is that. So I'm not so surprised that... South Africans think Nigeria is the genesis and the uh, and the revolution of their problems. But what I'm saying is, 
we have so many of these issues both in our countries within our countries and outside with our fellow africans that africans don't actually realize that we are the ones that are being attacked we are being attacked altogether so these people these players just plant little seeds of all these things inside within us and we start fighting each other instead of facing the hard truth the west has been trying has been controlling us and has been ripping us off since time immemorial that is exactly my point so papa let me let me let me finish this to you look what i'm saying is that wise compared uh, let me say something because I got to go, Kojo. I got to go. What I'm saying is that the situation in South Africa is not only, you know, subject to South Africa. Right in Haiti, you know, you got black people on one side, the Hispaniola, and on the other side on Haiti, and they're xenophobic. They don't want Haitians to go into them. They're on the same island, one small island. So it's a colonial spell. It's a colonial government that is afflicting this instrument across, you know, the black diaspora. When he fought the battle against Mussolini for the freedom of Africa, after doing so, noticing that the Europeans had colonized the majority, if not the most of Africa, he quickly, after establishing his, his government, formed an organization named the OAU, Organized Africa Unity. The purpose of this was to reunite the African countries, to remove all this, the African segregation, all the phobia, all the, the xenophobic actions that was that was given to Africa because prior to colonization, there was no borders in Africa. There was a brethren that did a little funny video where in, I forget the country, they have a stone and one, I think it's Kenya. One side is Kenya, the stone, and then the other side is another country. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's an invisible border. And the emperor had formed the OAU to, to unite the African leaders to come together to remove these borders, to return Africa as a United State, as it is in the United States of America. They have one government, central government, and all the, the states are unified under this government. There is no borders. There's no separation. It's one Africa. The African leaders are still today, some of them, if not most of them, still under this Western colonial movement so they sabotage the OAU it's not let me finish let me land my plane they sabotage the OAU they make it now the AU right and today you got Burkina Faso you know Ibram P or you got Mali these people are trying to get rid of colonialism um my final words is to South Africa and the black South African people if you have a colonial in place government there is nothing that is going to fix South Africa until you remove that colonial infested government. If Nigeria have a colonial infested government, Nigeria is not going to be a better. No country in Africa under Western colonial, you know, influence is going to, going to, they're going to be what they always been, a fight against African unity, a fight against removing these borders is these borders would make south african think nigerians are different people is these borders that make malawians think you know zimbabweans is different people we all one people bro brothers and sister children we come from one one root family there is no separation so all countries in africa are under colonial influences starting from ghana or nigeria if you check their governments, whatever that uh, the products that they're exporting overseas, check the companies behind all those oil production or even the the gold mining in, in Ghana. Check if it's it really Ghanaians that are behind those mines. It's the Western. So you can talk of freedom, freedom only is only for political rule, but still economically, Africa is not free. Look at Ghana. It's the biggest gold producer currently in Africa. But how many Ghanaians that owns those mines? It's all foreign companies that are mining in Ghana. The same applies to Nigeria, the oil that they are having there. Very few politicians on top there that are benefiting from 
from all those minds. So our leaders in, in Africa, you know, they are, I would say they are puppets of the West. This is how it's going to take time for Africans to unite. Because if they are not, uh, they are misleading the people and they 